Now, teeth don't normally break. There's usually a disease process undermining tooth structure where it will cave in. So this particular patient um, had a little bit or some decay undermining the tooth structure and the tooth just caved in. The edges were very sharp. It was cutting her tongue. She could hardly talk, speak, or eat. We do every exam, whether it's in an emergency basis or as a regular patient, we do this comb beam radiograph. So this comb beam radiograph is a three-dimensional radiograph of the patient's jaw. CBCT, comb beam computed tomography, or basically a CAT scan. We get to look three-dimensionally at the patient's skull. We get to see things we would never be able to see. Now this patient's concern um, was on a tooth down on the lower left. So we are going to be evaluating this tooth down on the lower left. So as I move this inspection window around, you can see these three planes here, one, two, and three, representing these three windows down here, move around in her skull. So I am going to go ahead and take a look at the tooth. It was third from the back on the lower left and take a look at it and see what I can see. I'm going to view this longitudinal, our side view. I can move from the inside of her nose out to her cheek and see everything in between. So first thing we notice here um, on this tooth right here, the third one from the back that she was complaining about, was this very large dark area right here. And when we see this dark area, um, that would indicate there's either decay or some sort of other problem. You can also see inside the root, this dark area right here, this is the nerve and living tissue in the center part of the tooth. So we're very concerned about this particular um, situation because this dark area is getting very close to where the nerve is at. So we can also look from a front view, front to back view, and we can see this same area, this same fractured area right here, kind of a dark halo here on the tooth, but we can also look from the top view down and look at the tooth and see this large three-dimensional fracture here. The whole inside part of her tooth is fractured off right here, and then there's kind of a darker area right here that re would possibly represent decay or something else. So we, um, so I looked at this, but the first thing I want to do is also look at the general health of the tooth. So what type of treatment would be necessary to be able to help restore this patient? This patient wasn't experiencing a lot of pain on the tooth, like hot and cold sens sensitivity or throbbing in the bone. But I also want to verify and make sure that they have no infections that are brewing down in their jaw. So I do not see any infections or other problems down at the apices of the roots. The bone around it looks very healthy. So this is all good news. So um, also, while I was just randomly looking at this, I immediately looked up above the posing tooth on the top jaw. Can you see this very large hole here? So this patient, I pointed out to the patient, this wasn't causing her pain, but this is a big problem. She has an abscess in her jaw. This root canal here is failing. There's bacteria growing inside these canals, going out and causing a massive infection inside her jaw. This bacteria in her bone is going directly into her bloodstream and affecting all the organs in her, in her body. So we, uh, I recommended that she come back and that we evaluate this. So this is something that we typically see all the time. I just have direct the patient to come back when we can take care of the problem on another day. So dealing with the chief complaint is this right here. We used this awesome piece of technology called the Seric machine to prepare her tooth for a partial crown. Now note that when we did this tooth, this is not a traditional crown prep or cutting all of the tooth structure off. The advan one of the great advantages of using this Seric machine is that I can be minimally invasive. And that would mean that I can save healthy tooth structure, only remove the things that are bad, strengthen the tooth, and then leave all of the healthy tooth structure there. So uh, with this machine, what we do is we go in um, and we do scans to start with. So the first thing I did is what's called a buckle bite scan, which is how the teeth fit together. And after that, we did a scan of the opposing arch, which is the upper jaw. So you can see we're creating a scan of the teeth on the upper jaw, posing the tooth that we're going to be um, working on.
Now I'm scanning the lower jaw with the fractured tooth in it. I'm scanning this and you can see the front half of that tooth is completely gone and there's a lot of decay down underneath. There's also decay on the chewing surface of the tooth and there's a chip on the very back side of the tooth. So I'm only going to be including the portions that need to be cut away. Okay, so in this portion I'm cutting away the tooth um, because we're going to prepare the tooth and I'm cutting away any extraneous um, information like uh, the cheek and maybe part of the tongue or something that's in there. So I'm trimming this away using the software and after I get this all trimmed away then I can go back in start off where I left off with the existing um, stuff that is still there um, but with the prepared tooth. Now I'm going to do a scan of the prep on the tooth. Now I did a scan here um, of the preparation that I originally had and then I noticed that the, that big chip was on the back side of the tooth. So I stopped and then I, I started over again um, to include that chip in the back side of the tooth. Then the machine starts to generate the three-dimensional image in the model phase. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing the margins of the tooth itself. Um, the machine tries to, and its artificial intelligence, tries to draw a margin line all by itself. However, I get to be the final judge of how that will end up, and so I'm redrawing the margins right now. So, the, so you can see how I've saved a good portion of the healthy tooth structure. I do not need to replace all of the tooth structure or grind it down like most traditional dentists do for a full crown. I'm being able to do a partial crown, save all the necessary things, and then keep, um, yeah, save all of the necessary things uh, and then replace the, the missing part of the tooth structure. So I am doing the margins. A typical dentist will send all of their work out to a lab and Basically, they get what the lab decides where the margins need to, need to go. The margin is the place where it meets the restoration meets the tooth structure, and it's the critical area on a two, on a crown restoration. It is the area that if it's open even a few microns, it can fail as bacteria can get in there and you can't clean it out. I do all of these myself. I draw the margins, the machine designs it for me, and then I go in and customize the, mar the, uh, the restoration itself. So right now, um, there's certain areas that are too thin. How many people have had crowns or other fillings that have, have catastrophically failed? Well, that's because you are putting your hands in the into a lab technician who doesn't necessarily have the knowledge or the understanding of the material science of the various di different de dental materials. So this patient, I wanted a restoration that would be very aesthetic, but also would have strength and um, be the best situation for their particular chewing and functional um, design, uh, anatomical design of their mouth. So I am designing the contact in between the tooth to make sure that it has a good snapping contact when you floss. Um, that's another thing that's not guaranteed if you send this off to the lab. Sometimes it may be open and then food will eternally get stuck in between your teeth. So I'm designing everything um, with materials uh, and everything else for uh, creating the most optimal restoration. So this is the restoration. Um, this is going to be um, milled live right as the patient's waiting and then we're going to be delivering it. Now that we started seeing this patient at 8.30 p.m. and we delivered this restoration at 9.30. She was walking out of here at 9.30. So I'm really happy with the final restoration and how it looked. Um, and here you can also see that I can find out what shade her tooth is using the technology and the scans. So we have an almost perfect shade match of the restoration 
to the surrounding tooth and teeth that are in the quadrant. So with the CEREC machine, one of the things I get to do is choose the material that I'm going to be milling the patient's restoration out of. So I use this machine, um, the CEREC Prime Mill, which is a computer-aided milling machine that takes information directly from the, uh, the CEREC Prime Scan, the data that we received scanning and designing in the patient's mouth and it sends it directly over to the machine. We put a block of porcelain inside the machine based upon what I think will be the most aesthetic and best long lasting durable material for the patient. We place it in the milling machine, we lock it in, and then we press start. It usually takes anywhere between five and 15 minutes to mill a restoration. This machine is very effective and very, very accurate. So when I deliver this restoration, it's like delivering a puzzle piece into the prepared area that we had on, uh, that we scanned in the patient's mouth. So I'm taking this crown, I'm using a special diamond polishing paste. I'm removing the sprue, which is the last little piece of porcelain that attaches it to the solid block, removing that first and then polishing the, uh, the restoration till it's a very um, uh, tooth-like structure. Now these materials that I use are very, very similar to natural tooth structure in their wear properties, their flexing property properties, their um, uh, flexural strength, their compressive strength. All of these things are very important things to consider in the material science of restoring a tooth.